Hey, it's Dr. Rick. I wanted to talk to you about timing and sleep. If you look behind me, you'll see traffic patterns and you'll see school buses. And you'll kind of figure out it could be morning, but then again, it could be 3 o'clock in the afternoon, too. It's hard to tell with uh, weather as it is. And this is typical for Chicago. Sometimes the weather, weather patterns change, the sun doesn't come up, and uh, it can fool you into thinking it's different parts of the day. Well, it can also fool the brain. The brain can, it usually depends on cues. So light in the morning tells the brain to wake up, shut off the melatonin, and start creating cortisol and other hormones. Darkness at night and relaxation and peace tells the pineal gland, the gland inside the brain, to start secreting melatonin, time to sleep. This is a circadian rhythm. When melatonin gets secreted, usually it'll tell the brain to start going into alpha wave, delta wave, theta, and, and so forth and so on. What we do during the day with problem solving, with driving, with uh, uh, tasks, is we live in beta wave. That's a certain speed or cycles per second that the brain, brain tissue fires off electrical impulses. And those electrical impulses are responsible for thinking, for motor, for feelings, for getting through as human beings. You can't have that all day long or else the brain won't rest and when the brain doesn't rest you have problems with fatigue. You have, you can't think. Your emotions are uncontrolled, problem solving is poor, memory is terrible. So we have to have brain rest. The brain kind of has to recharge itself. That's going into dream states. But the, if you look at my link to the slide share uh, lecture I gave on sleep, you'll be able to understand, if you can get through it, how, uh, how effective sleep hygiene is for making life a little better, getting rid of fatigue, making performance during the day a lot more happy and fulfilling. So check it out and hopefully you'll get through it. The objective for today is to kind of just mention that even though you go to sleep and get shut eye at 11 or 10 o'clock at night and you wake up again at 6, it doesn't mean your brain is getting rest. The brain only gets rest when you provide it with the right environment, nutrition, activity, and mental clarity and relaxation therapy that needs to get to sleep. If you're getting to sleep and you're dead tired and that's all you remember is going to sleep at 10 and waking up at 6, but yet you're totally fatigued in the morning and you're crabby, your uh, problem solving is poor, it could be that you have a sleep disorder. When you go, while you're in sleep I should say, the brain has to go through several cycles. It turns off beta wave and it turns on alpha, delta, gamma, the things I just went through. And as it does that, it does it to slow down so it can go to stage one, stage two, stage three, REM, a rapid eye movement, stage four, and start all over again. You're allowed to have six cycles a night. If you have six cycles a night of deep sleep, you should feel pretty refreshed. After hitting the snooze button one time, you're ready to go, maybe a little tea, cup of tea or coffee, and then that's it. For those of you who need just cup after cup of coffee or Red Bull to start your day or get a stimulate, I have uh, somebody that I work with that if there's, if there's, a, if there's a lull in the, in the activity of the clinic, she'll start to fall asleep. That's kind of the same thing as our uh, truck drivers falling asleep at, at stop signs, falling asleep in traffic, uh, nodding off at the wheel. You might think it's funny when you see a drunk guy kind of nodding off and swerving. Well, good luck if you're the person he's behind. But the same thing can happen with sleep disturbance. That's also a high percentage of accidents in the United States is because of sleep disturbance. The Exxon Valdez, the, one of the biggest catastrophes of uh, mad, modern man where the barge hit something and leaked oil, well, that was because the captain fell asleep at the wheel. So it, it's more than just a sleep disorder. It's, it's leading to a lot of disease. And that's why I want to empower you to kind of don't just think that your fatigue is from something else. Try to work with the easiest things first, and that would be sleep hygiene. The easiest things I tell my patients are if there's a whole bunch of possibilities, you rule out the possibilities. Anemia, heart disease, sleep apnea. And if they are ruled out within reason and not spending too much money, just try a trial of 21 days of relaxation therapy at night following. There is a 21 day meditation challenge I invite my patients to try at the Chopra Center where, where Oprah and Deepak 
walk people through a meditative idea, and you can play that at night. You set yourself up for proper sleep, turn down on lights, turn down the temperature. You consider taking melatonin, 5-HTP, maybe other things, magnesium at night. And then you try to get through the night. It might be tough to get away from the anxiety medicines or the sleep medicines. When you start your day in the morning, you start at the same time every day for about 21 days straight. Maybe a little B12 sublingual, maybe a little rhodiola. But you do that without taking any naps. Do that on a regular basis for 21 days straight and the brain will set a rhythm. The rhythm it sets will be able, if it's healthy and you're healthy, you should be able to sustain that without any medicines, without any herbs. But that's the easiest thing to do is just try that. If it doesn't work, okay, then you do the expensive workup. Pay your co-pays and look into other things. Losing weight is always important, eating properly, not eating huge meals before sleep, avoiding alcohol if you can, and avoiding any forms of caffeine after noon. Those things will all help with maintaining a good sleep hygiene. If you maintain good sleep hygiene, if the brain is rested, you'll actually, with the same amount of time that you might or might not think you have, you'll be able to be more efficient with your work day. You'll be able to squeeze more out, maybe get time to exercise, lose weight. You see the positive things with all this, but it all starts with just, I guess, admitting there might be a problem and trying the easiest thing possible. So, those of you who didn't guess, it's about 4.15 in Chicago, and it's November, so if you could tell, then you're good, but still, your brain still needs a little thing to get through, and those of you who hit your uh, iPads at night, try to reverse the screen so it's black instead of white. That might help with some of your sleep if you can't get away. Really, putting down that iPad, not watching your DVRs of all the recorded shows you want to watch, probably be the easiest thing but uh, it takes a lot of work to try to break it believe me it, it'll be better for you so you can avoid all the medicines that are coming your way to fix something that probably just is related to sleep